What's up, this is Kong from xfaders.com and in this video we're going to discuss what I feel to be the best controller for sound switch. Before we get started I'd like to give a huge shout out to Marlon Ace. Uh, the work that he did on the tutorial for sound switch was great and it helped me to decide to go ahead and pull the trigger and purchase it. The videos that I watched were about two years ago but recently he has done an updated video on sound switch. I'll leave those links in the description below so you can check those out and hopefully help you to decide whether or not you want to get the sound switch. To add a little context, um, I am a solo DJ. I do everything pretty much by myself, so I needed something uh, for my lighting to give a little bit more uh, pizzazz and, and spice up my performances. At the time, I was using ADJ's uh, products uh, and as well as purchasing the Chauvet um, lighting uh, controller. But for me, it, it was just too much work, additional work to DJ and controlling the lights. So Sound Switch made that whole process a lot easier for me. So before we get started, I must say that I'm not sponsored or affiliated with SoundSwitch. These are all my opinions and I just want to share this information with you and hopefully help you decide what you feel is best when it comes to your lighting. I chose the Native Instruments Control F1 mainly because of its customization, RGB pads, and compact size. The process of configuring it is pretty much straightforward and it seems to be very flexible with other programs. So when you first open the application, in the bottom left corner you will be greeted with this window. In this section here, you can set up templates and rename them. So each application that you have, you can create a new template so it will match the control F1. Below that is the edit section, which has the basic file control options. And right next to it is the factory templates. So this allows you to upload a template. And in this particular example, it's FL Studio. So the next tab at the top is the pages. Um, the, when you hold the shift key on the F1, it will bring up a whole new page of uh, options for you. So as you can see here, once you click basic is one view and once you hit shift or hold shift, it brings up another view. Now, if you want to hold shift, you can keep it on the gate feature or you can switch it to toggle. So when you press it, it will switch uh, permanently to that next page. Now, for this example, I decided to keep it on gate and you'll see later on why that was beneficial for me when programming it to sound switch. So the next tab you have is the sign tab, and this is where you'll spend most of your time configuring all your buttons. In this window, you have plenty of options for the type. As you see under the drop down, you have quite a few things to choose from. But when it comes to programming the F1 for sound switch, majority of the buttons need to be switched over to the note type. So what you'll need to do is highlight all of the buttons at once and simply click the drop down to change them over to note. When discussing the potentiometers as well as the faders, uh, they need to continue to stay on control change. You'll see a little bit later why that's important and how you can uh, make additional changes to how the buttons respond. Uh, also too for that knob as well as that display needs to stay to control change. Now, also don't forget these buttons here at the top. They also need to be switched over to note as well as the ones right below. It's also important to ensure that all of the, the buttons uh, have uh, separate values for each one. So just double check to make sure that the value that's assigned to them, the MIDI value, is not duplicated on any buttons so you won't get any adver adverse effects. As you can see in the example, it's as simple as just clicking on a particular button and scroll in the mouse wheel, or if you click and hold and drag up and down, you'll also be able to make changes. Another great part about this controller is any changes made within the software are real time. So as you program sound switch or any other application, you can actually make those changes on the fly. So switching back over to the basic, which is without the shift, um, as you can see here, I've, I've made sure all of the values or notes are different, but you can also set certain buttons to off to create separation or just simply um, you're not gonna use that button at all. I wanna cover briefly on how to program these buttons. Now, of course, this is totally up to you on how you want to set up each one of your buttons, but at least I wanna get you started on a, a good idea or a good layout. So the first thing you would do is click the first button and you can choose first which mode you want to set the button for, whether it be toggle, which means you have to press it, um, the, it will remain lit or the setting will remain, or you can switch over to gate where it's momentary where you have to hold the button to engage it. Uh, right after that, you have the options for the color mode where you can change it from single to dual color. What that does for you is in single mode, it'll only stay that one color pressed. And in uh, double mode, 
it allows you to choose a secondary color when, the, when that button is pressed. So in this example, the button is white and when pressed, it turns red. For the purpose of sound switch, it's better just to have the color the same as what your MIDI control is for sound switch. And here I just changed the color just so you could see it clearly. Um, the white wasn't showing up as well because it's blown out. And you will do this process for each one of the buttons. Um, and you'll see that the buttons or the colors actually line up very well with the sound switch software. So as you can see in the top left corner are the options that sound switch have for your colors. And again, you'll just go through for each button and set the colors accordingly. Now what's unfortunate is in the screen capture, it did not show uh, the mapping process, but simply when you right click on a, a button in sound switch or uh, object in sound switch, it will allow you to map that button. So all you have to do is right click and click on the button that corresponds on the controller. Same thing applies with the uh, faders. Just right click on the fader and adjust that uh, fader on the controller and it will automatically map it. It's also important that once you right click not to move the mouse, if you move the mouse off, it will switch over to just the normal uh, mode. So the way you get it to set up again to map is just right click again and just stay on that, that particular button or slider that you want to map. If you have issues with it not appearing, all you have to do is slide off and come right back onto it and it'll give you that option again. I mapped the scripted track uh, and master intensity to that knob and also too if you can see here the the display is showing the intensity but it goes from uh, 0 to 127 so the little light in the top left corner denotes the hundreds place um, and this will allow me to adjust how bright the effect is for the lighting now in the controller software it goes from 0 to 127 so it's a little bit uh, misleading when you're trying to map it but for the most part just think of it as the the max lighting will go all the way up to 127 but it will be a hundred percent in the sound switch software now if you look in the control uh, f1 application you'll see that it's set to go um, by fives um, so the easiest thing to do is to set it whatever number you want it can be fives tens i probably wouldn't suggest doing one because it will take so much scrolling for you to increase the intensity of the lighting but on screen at the moment in sound switch, um, I'm just jumping through the tabs just to show you some of the other options. And all of these can be mapped directly to a button if you find that you use them in your performances. Like for example here, this is the um, your static look. So if you have certain colors that you want to show up during your uh, set, you can program those uh, buttons and just set them to the F1. I would probably suggest doing it under the shift so once you hold shift, you'll be able to press one of the, the color pads to control your uh, static looks. And last but not least, the, the BPMs, let's say if you don't have the, the track laid out, you can tap the BPMs to um, set your lighting or you can make fine tune adjustments with the pot at the top. And as well as if you're having sync issues, you can make that adjustment there. But bear in mind, these are all user customizable. Um, this is how I set up my controller. But the, the key points is this thing allows a lot of flexibilities. So just wanted to give you some examples of how everything works and how it looks. Um, this will add a little bit of context to, to everything that I've been mentioning before and how to set this up. So the beginning of this video is just a fade in. And once we get to the, to the peak section, I'll be able to change some of the colors, but it's just a fade in using red. So as you can see here, the colors have changed to like a teal um, slash blue. But if I hit the red button now, it's actually programmed the whole performance to be red. And when I click off, it just switches back to the original colors. All right, here I just changed the colors to pink. So it just replaces the value in that um, in that scripted uh, light show. And I switched over to the uh, performance page just so you can see um, which buttons I'm hitting. Now, now I'm doing the strobe section. So I've set it to press and hold uh, one of the buttons and then adjust the fader to adjust the intensity of the strobe. And here I'm turning down the, the scripted intensity 
um, as you can see the lights are fading out and turning them back up to 127 to be at the max if i press in on that uh button it will turn all the lights off and hit it again lights come back on Um, this particular light does not have UV, so um, of course pressing it, you won't get anything out of it, but I set the browse button to UV just because it's like a bluish color. Um, it, it provides separation. Switching over to the edit mode, I can sort of tap the 100% button and this will create like syncopation or add little effects to the song um, that's not pre-programmed into it. So that'll be cool just to add lib in between, no different than scratching or something like that on the track. Okay, and here I was pressing the shift button to switch over to another page, but as long as I hold shift and press the first button, the lights will remain red. So this is cool if you just wanna add any quick color adjustments or um, you wanted to make some on the fly changes to the color. As an honorable mention, I definitely wanted to suggest the Newmark Orbit. It's been discontinued for a couple of years and may be kinda of difficult to find, but if you find one on the used market, whether it be eBay or Guitar Center, or any of the, the DJ equipment selling websites, see if you can pick it up for a good price. Um, consider that the battery in it is still in good condition, so you might wanna test it out prior to, but if it's at an excellent price, um, and if you don't mind tinkering, you may be able to open it up and replace the battery, but no guarantees, I have not tried it yet with mine. But as you can see, it is pretty much mapped the same way as the Tractor Control F1. Um, you can control all the buttons the same way, whether it's momentary or um, a toggle. It gives quite a bit of options because it has 64 pads in total to configure, as well as the button in the center will allow four different um, controls. So that will be great for changing your, your fader um, devices on sound switch. Also too, it has an accelerometer. So by holding the top uh, triggers, um, you're able to tilt the device left and right and up and down, which will control, in this case, the strobe and hitting the other trigger will control the intensity. So I can just tilt the device up and down. This is great for if you're standing in the middle of the dance floor and you want to make announcements or just basically don't want to be tethered to your equipment and do lighting changes on the fly. Um, but again, if you have any questions or uh, just discussions or ideas, leave them down in the comment section. I'll try and help out as much as possible. If you're out there DJing again, definitely enjoy and be safe. Um, please like, share, and subscribe and check us out on the website at www.xfaders.com.